Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Wednesday, December 11th, 2019. And in this video, I want to cover trade ideas, so show you some new swing trade setups, um, the money to be made lately. Uh, it's just not a very conducive trade environment. We have virtually no volatility in the stock market, and uh, day traders, especially if you're going to swing trade the index ETFs, both day traders and swing traders need volatility to make money. Uh, you can't make money in a, you know, when the market grinds back and forth. Let's just take a look at what's happened today. Now, today is a Fed day, so I waited till the Fed meeting was out of the way. Um, Powell should be have just he should have just started his press conference here at 2:30, and uh, this is it. When you look at this is a one-minute chart of spy. You can see down here you have uh, the close from yesterday right here, 4 p.m. close. That's where the market's closed on this yellow line right here, right there. Gapped up today, opened right about here, well, right there, and went above that and kind of traded within the open and yesterday's close most of today. And then at 2 p.m. we had the FOMC announcement. Now keep in mind, this one's not a big, it wasn't expected to be a big market moving amount. There were no surprises expected, nor did the Fed give any, nor does the Fed in recent years do surprises. Um, in fact, there's a lot of criticism. They talked themselves um, ad nauseum, you know, to to you know come out and and, and give the market expectations as to what they're going to do or not do. So there's usually very little surprises. And with that being said, there's you know the market hangs on their every little word. Again, this wasn't a big meeting, but what I usually say is. Um, you, you, you know, from experience, I've seen you usually get what I call these post FOMC rips and dips. Now, this rip is not very big. It looks big on this chart, or you know, decent compared to what we've seen lately. But measuring it out, you know, just from where we're at um, after the announcement, uh, relatively speaking, it's a <laughs> tiny. It's a 8.18 percent. It's in the pop-up box there to the left, down at the bottom in green. Uh, so less than two tenths of a percent up. And again, this is. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. And I'm, I've cut back on my updates. I've cut back on the end of day videos. I'll eliminate those. If I do a midday video and there's absolutely no change um, on the charts since that video, there's really no point, you know, in, in wasting my time or yours, more so your time. I don't mind doing those videos if you guys want them or individual charts. I'll, I'll post. But again, when when there's not any uh, significant developments worth noting, here it is. This is the last few days. We've traded in this very tight sideways trading range uh, since, uh, what is that, Friday, last Friday. Uh, so from where we opened up Friday, that's exactly where we're at right now. See, as I move over here to the left, we've gone exactly nowhere since then. And from high to low, from the very top of that range to the very bottom of the range, uh, that has only been a move of uh, less than 1%. Okay, so I can sit here and talk about it all day long. Now, uh, from a technical perspective, really nothing's changed on the daily chart. We still have those, you know, divergences that have been building, the recent bearish PPO crossovers. The market, you know, started to go down, had those bear flags play out last week or a week or so ago. And, you know, bounced off support, moved up. But again, we're kind of locked in the range. Um, you know those divergences were to play out there's certainly the potential for more downside but the market's been resilient and I'm gonna go over trade setups because that's where the money's to be made uh, lately uh, again it's not the opportunities are not in the broad market or many of those you know highly indexed stocks alright so that's SPY QQQ same story and let's just look at the 60 minute chart and kinda touch on that again moving sideways so really not much to report uh, PPO remains uh, right now it's still above the zero line that's in bullish territory a constructive territory so uh, maybe those divergences don't play out you know I was expecting one more leg down uh, maybe we get it maybe not my convictions aren't high and in fact when I look at this chart you know a couple things have to happen number one like I said this is a 60 minute trend indicator the PPO when that white line crosses above it goes the trend goes from bearish to bullish and it has stayed bullish this whole time it said the trend was bullish had a crossed over here and I pointed that out but then we crossed back over and now we're clearly above that level and again uh, so that puts this near-term trend as bullish and um, you know the majority of the setups I'm seeing are bullish as well so uh, I'll do these updates you know I thought we might get one more leg down in the market uh, to that target zone it as of now it doesn't look like it but uh, if anything changes I'll let you know uh, again, I'm a little always skeptical of any initial rally, even the subsequent rip or dip, I should say, whether it's a rally or dip after an F a Fed meeting. So let's just see how the day closes. If anything big happens, maybe I'll do an end of day update or maybe I'll do one just because I haven't done one uh, in the last couple of days.
All right, trade ideas. So before I get to the trade ideas, um, there was a lot of, quite a few questions and inquiries in the trading room about the semis. You know, I painted a picture, uh, showed you the history of these trends, very strong bullish trends, very strong bearish trends, huge gain potentials. A couple people have asked about it, um, but there are absolutely no sell signals still in the semiconductors. Uh, SOXX, uh, this is the you know, go-to ETF I like to use for the semis, still well above, comfortably above that uptrend line off the December lows right now within this uh, bearish rising wedge pattern and uh, not even anything remotely close to a sell signal. And uh, somebody asked if you know today was a breakout. Not really, we're just coming up to the previous highs right there. Um, and uh, again, well, just something to monitor right now. Um, you know, would I go long there? I think there's better fish to fry. If I see an individual semi with a nice setup, maybe. Uh, same thing with short, but uh, with the semis as a whole, they tend to flock together. Uh, so you really want, if you're gonna go long, you wanna, and the trend is bullish, you could certainly do that, just trail stops up, but I'm waiting patiently, just like the markets for the next objective swing short, and that would either come on some type of bearish candlestick reversal and or uh, a break down below that trend line. So I wanted to make mention there. And then on the 60 minute chart, I pointed out, here's SOX 60 minute chart. Here's a larger uptrend line off the June lows. We're still comfortably above right there, the semis are. And then there's this little minor downtrend, or uptrend line, I'm sorry, that uh, broke down and we're back testing now. And uh, any new high at this point, if as long as it's a marginal new high, will be a divergent high. But again, divergence is not a sell signal. So I just wanted to update that since, again, there's a lot of interest in the semis. And um, I'm now, now rolling to some of the trade ideas that, uh, you know, some new trade ideas. I'm constantly scanning uh, my watch list. Uh, let's start out here with uh, this one today, just just to kind of illustrate how much these low price stocks can move. Uh, I try to do my best when highlighting, you know, very aggressive low price trades as to the risk potential and profit potential it goes hand in hand. Uh, here's a little energy stock. As you guys know, I've been really, you know, eyeing the energy sector. It looks setting up to be uh, very bullish. You know, one of the best looking sectors, in my opinion, in the S&P 500. Need to see a little more upside on oil to, to strengthen the case for a you know, nice rally. But uh, a lot of these stocks are moving lately. Here's a little one. Now again, penny stock. This thing was priced for death, and it still may die. Let me let me say that again. This stock may die, meaning Chapter 11 bankruptcy. You can buy it, and one day you can wake up and you've lost most or all your money. Um, can gap down quite a bit. Uh, that's the nature of a lot of these low price energy stocks. But the chart has was very constructive. You know, you had this bullish divergence right here, positive divergence, and I just want to show you how much they can rise in just a couple of days from where it was. Uh, two days ago on Monday uh, through today's high the stock has rallied 342 uh, percent now uh, my I'm not I'm not buying this personally I didn't buy it uh, I just want to point out that I've seen a lot of similar charts very constructive charts I'm going to go through some of those now uh, so you know they're all not going to go up that much but um, uh, the ones that stand out right now really are the um, gold stocks are starting to look interesting, starting to move. I did an update on that recently, so I'm not going to get into detail there. But the two sectors that really seem to have above size gain potential with some very nice bullish setups, some bottoming plays uh, in most cases, are the biotechs and the energy stocks. So let me continue on through here and uh, go over the ones that stand out to me uh, in no particular order. DSK. KE. Uh, this is a trucking company and uh, you can see here we have a triangle pattern by these two lines here. Let me color those and click on this tool. You have this is a symmetrical triangle pattern. Those things can break either way but so far this stock's breaking out today up about uh, over 10 percent and it also has resistance there about 328 that it's popping above. Uh, so uh, if it can continue to build on these gains, it's not comfortably above that level now. It's only at 332, but watch it. If you continue, if you start to see this one uh, take increasing volume and uh, uh, continue to build on these gains, especially a solid close above there, I think it could run and probably will run. Uh, I have to check things such as earnings and all that. I haven't done so, but from where it's at now, if I can zoom in around that 330-ish level, up into that trend line it doesn't look like a lot on the chart but that would be about you know 12 percent gain if it gets there uh, maybe reaction there maybe on through there and um, just a quick 
tip, if you will. I'm throwing out a lot of unofficial trade ideas lately, highlighting stocks and sectors that may move. Some of these are actionable, some aren't. The way to trade it, if you're kind of new to investing or trading, uh, use OCO orders. I've, I've written about those on the site before. Uh, if you're not familiar, I'll try to post um, you know, one of the... the uh, a link to where I explain those, but basically an OCO order works like this. Let's say you like this one. Um, and I like the trucking sector. Um, I'm you know interested in this one, but I also you know realize that uh, it's a Fed day, breakouts can fail, things and so forth, so on. What you do at that point is you identify your price target. It's probably not the best example to use, but we'll just stick with that 12% upside. So you want to use a three to one uh, risk reward ratio, let's say on that. So then you put a 4% loss underneath. And uh, an OCO order is two orders you enter at the same time. Almost all brokers have it. If you don't know where to find it, call your broker, go to search on their website. It's usually under conditional orders or advanced order types. And what it does, you buy this one, you go long, whatever your, you know, how many shares of DSKE you want. And then you turn around and you put in an OCO order, which means one cancels the other. And one of those is a stop loss order. Make sure you do it good to cancel. That way it won't expire at the end of the day. You want to use a good to cancel instead of a day order. Uh, and then the other order is a sell limit order at... Now this one's tricky because a downtrend line is dynamic. I can't tell you what, what price that will be at when it hits it because that uh, trend line comes in at a different price every day. It's a sloping trend line. So, uh, But somewhere, if it, if it happened relatively quick, you can see right about maybe 370 or so, somewhere in there. And so that's how that works. And you could also set a stop below there. Uh, not one of my favorites, but again, I'm just throwing out things I like. Uh, if I, you know, like one more than the other, I'll try to let you know that. And I'll also try to, you know, make clear which ones are actionable and which ones aren't. Uh, this one's JMEI, uh, Specialty Retail. Uh, we do have retail sales coming out on Friday. Keep that in mind. That could affect some of these retailers. But uh, almost a bearish and a bullish engulfing candle not quite because it didn't take out bullish engulfing candle is when you have a big green candle uh you only want to look for them at the end of a downtrend not just in the middle of a trend um you just like you want to look for a bearish engulfing after an extended uptrend they're they're reversal sticks this one like i said in the body of this would have to engulf the body of that previous candle but it's a big green candle this one's up nice today and for all intents and purposes, a very similar effect as the uh, bullish engulfing because it just barely missed cut getting that entire candle uh, yesterday. In fact, it's engulfed, you know, the previous, what is that, probably six or more candles right there. Um, that, that it has done. Positive divergence at the lows recently and uh, looks like it's coming up here to at least that one. It's a low price company. Keep that in mind. A lot of risk there. Take a small position size if you decide to take it. That first target there is uh, the resistance is at 198. You might want to sell 197, 196 if that's your target. And uh, there's some additional targets up there, the downtrend line then 223. All right, uh, next one up, ORMP. Uh, this is a biotech. Uh, again, common theme. I'm seeing a lot of biotechs uh, really starting to move. Uh, and, uh, and again, similar technicals on, on a lot of these. Uh, you had uh, bullish divergence at the recent lows. You had them beat down coming out of a bear market or at least a pretty extended downtrend. And this one after the divergent low ripped up. Uh, so what uh, what I see when I look at this, what appears to be a uh, bull flag pattern, and you might say, gosh, Randy, this stock has went from, you know, uh, 2, 235 or 225 up to 579. It's, you know, doubled, more than doubled in just a, a you know, week or a couple weeks or so here. Yeah, that's a, a move right there. And that is, um, yeah, less than two weeks, eight trading, seven trading sessions, I think, if I get that candle right. Uh, but what what stands out to me is what looks like a bull flag pattern. And um, right here, let me pause this one second. Okay, so you have a potential bull flag pattern right here. Uh, your flag just broke out impulsively. There's your flagpole measured target on a bull flag pattern. You take the distance of the uh, flagpole, the impulsive leg up, and you add that to where the flag breaks out. And uh, or the bottom, I'm sorry, not where it breaks out. You go to the bottom there. And that would take you all the way up there. I used to, I had this level here from before. I must have had a short setup on this stock back around 968 right here. It was resistance, and it broke this trend line, back tested, and boom, that that was a, you know, and simple stuff here, relatively simple. You know, divergent high, uh, ended that uh, rally or that. It was a, mostly a sideways trading, but that was a high, multi-year high in the stock. We had this correction, we came off this divergent low.
And just to illustrate how much those uh, little biotechs can move, this was Clovis. Remember, I pointed Clovis out right here uh, day after this breakout back here. And uh, that was about, I think, a 330, 350% run in just a few weeks there. You can see that, that rip up in Clovis. Uh, almost a perfect reversal of that downtrend line I'd added to the chart there. Uh, so the point is, these little biotechs can run. And look, Clovis actually looks to be doing the same thing. A little kickback rally here. Maybe it has another leg up. So... Again, these are you know uh, very aggressive, extremely high risk. So if you're going to trade individual biotechs, spread your money out. I like to take what I call a shotgun approach to the sector. Uh, half dozen or a dozen or more names if you can you manage that many positions. And again, a lot easier to manage a dozen or more positions with OCO orders in place so you don't have to watch each and every stock every second of the day. Um, if your price targets hit, it'll take you out automatically. And if your stops hit, it'll do the same for you and protect your downside. So that's uh, ORMP. Uh, you can see other potential targets there. And um, like I said, aggressive, speculative. Make sure to use stops. Don't fall in love with these things. Uh, and don't see dollar signs, you know, a hundred another 100% return because that thing could turn around and drop or it could gap down on unfavorable clinical trials, which reminds me of Sage. You know, fortunately, we weren't long Sage, but I did the uh, day of the breakdown. I mentioned it as an objective long here. To, I mentioned taking it personally. And with, uh, you know, stop below the lows that day. So far, so good. This uh, That stock has, has moved up and it's up, uh, you know, it's been climbing since. Uh, kind of consolidate for a little and it's up almost nine percent today so here's an example of a again they were knocked down on clinical trials i'm trying to use the example of the risks involved in trading these biotechs because that can come out of no anywhere whether in phase one two phase three clinical trials uh, bad news you know it goes the other way good news these things gap up as much but uh again the only way to manage that because the oco orders my point here is oco orders or any stop loss order does nothing nothing for you if you were in this stock and you see that nice support there ahead of 135.48 so let's say you did the you know right thing and you had a stop a little bit below that support level in case it broke it well guess where your stop loss order filled right here in the open stop loss orders once the stop price is hit or exceeded are converted to market orders so what happened is the stock didn't it closed there that day, opened here the next day, and that's why you have that huge volume. Every single stop loss order was filled at the open. Uh, and every stop limit order, you say, okay, I'll use a stop limit. It says sell me at 130 if it crosses below that level, but not anything less than 130. Well, in that case, guess where your stop limit order, what happened to it? It's still standing uh, good to cancel. It's been triggered, uh, so now you have a standing limit order to sell the stock at 130 but it has to get back there uh to fill at that level and it may never so uh, i just wanted to kind of impress upon the risk there's no way to completely eliminate um risk uh, in trading these type of stocks you can buy put options all that that's a whole other thing there's cost involved let's not even get into any more of a, a you know a tangent here uh let's go back to the trade ideas uh, all right f cell f c e l uh, this is a uh, utility. There's a big move up, and it could be flagging. It's a little bit long in the tooth for a flag, but uh, broke out of this downtrend line. Low price sucker, penny stock. Uh, so I'm going to move on right now. But I do like the the PPO is constructive. You can see down here across above the zero line, uh, the trend. Yeah, PPO 9 EMA trend indicator has told you uh, all along you know, since back here. I guess across right about there. If you really zoom in bearish trend be you know out of the stock or be short and recently it crossed over into bullish territory ppo is curling back up and so my guess is this one probably has another thrust up you could take it here with a stop not too far below or your next objective entry comes on a pop above 98 let's let's make that a dollar to be safe i like that level because um you know these uh, companies will try to get their share price above one dollar to avoid a delisting uh they'll do their darndest to get it up there um sometimes like they did back here have to do a reverse split and sometimes it doesn't always work uh penny stock be careful you could lose everything in it um just throwing ideas out here and yes so far I'm, as i'm realizing a lot of these are aggressive and might not fit everybody's taste so please if you're not sure what you're doing uh stay away from penny stocks um maybe just paper trade watch or what i like to say take your vegas money and put in there i'm not a big gambler but you know take what you might go to the casino or the dog track or wherever you you bet in um vegas and that's your gambling money if you lose it all hey no big deal um but that's I wouldn't put a normal position size. Don't put in these companies what you would put into Apple or 
or Microsoft or something like that. NK, another biotech stock. Well, what I see, what it looks to me as, uh, is this one's in a basing pattern here, right there. And if it can pop above that level, it's about 194 or so, and you have a downtrend line coming in, uh, that can op should open the door for a move up here to 266, and that would be a substantial move. You know, from $2 to 266, was that 33%? Not a, not a bad move, and uh, it could have more there. Now, it's this one's not actionable yet. It's in this trading range. It may remain in this trading range for a long time. Uh, it may ne well sooner or later it's going to break one way or the other. But uh, again, relatively low price. It's not a penny stock. And uh, and these biotechs, not a bad idea to maybe do a little of your own due diligence on them from a fundamental perspective. Uh, Yahoo Finance is a great source, you know, um, and there's some other ones out there to kind of see what it is they're working on. But usually I can just look at a stock. If I've never heard of it, um, and it's, you know, it's priced, a, you know, a dollar under five dollars a share usually, it's probably a one-trick pony. It's got one drug and that ban everything is banking on that one drug in the pipeline. They might have a few others, but there's more one that's going to either make or break the company and so you might want to kind of be aware of that and keep track tab of what's going on but just remember you know clinical trials can be going great and you're going to read you know they're going to try to pump out the most bullish headlines that they can uh legally uh the company will and of course analysts sometimes have whether they have a uh, vested interest or not um just just be careful that most analysts tend to be bullish and uh, you just have to again uh, there's no way to completely eliminate risk but you can mitigate that risk by using stops and using s relatively small position sizes uh, you can take a fractional position if a stock doubles on you or does goes up 50 percent uh, even if you had a one quarter position size uh, you did well you probably made more money than you would have made swing trading apple or anything like that all right, next one up, uh, LOGM, that's logmein.com. Yep, logmein. Uh, I believe I highlighted this one in recent weeks or months, probably on this breakout here. Uh, I've had this chart marked up like this. Uh, broke out, did a little bull flag right there. You see the impulsive move up, bull flag. There's one where the flag played out beyond the target. And um, again, I may have passed this one on. I just can't remember, but either way, it looks uh, you had this breakout, took out the secondary downtrend line, took out some resistance levels, pulled back in. Nothing goes up forever. Got very overbought, but uh, everything looks constructive. First of all, you had this uh, bullish divergent uh, divergence, you know, or divergent low, positive for bullish divergence, uh, preceding the breakout, and you had the initial leg up, and uh, we came back in. We back tested this support about 72.85. It was resistance before. That was a breakout point and the stock's moving up. Now if it can take out that previous reaction high, um, this one could continue higher. So uh, again, I would say, I'm uh, here, let me give you that target right here. This would be my next target, right about $85. We'll round it off, make it an even 85. Best to sell below, that's a round number. I'd, uh, you know, if I take that one, I'll probably have an order to sell about 84, 95 or six or somewhere in there. And um, there's potential. There's a big old gap to be backfilled if this one continues to run up, and that's certainly a possibility. Let me look at the weekly chart real quick, see if anything stands out. Well, just, you know, big, long-standing divergence here on the weekly chart right there as well. And uh, I can draw that. Uh, there's, that's probably similar to what I just showed you, the same pattern on the, on the daily chart. So this is a constructive-looking weekly chart right here. And... Um, you know, that's one you could probably tuck away for a while and just continue to raise stops. Maybe, you know, if it starts to pan out, you know, and you get ahead 5%, 10%, raise your stops to break even, and then just let it ride. It looks like a constructive-looking chart to me. All right, next one up. AXU, some miners that stand out. Uh, I already shared my thoughts on that recently. You're going to need to see gold break out. Gold's been in a multi-month trading range, so I'm not getting too excited on these guys yet, but uh, this one put in a nice divergent low. It's in, in stair-stepping higher. You know, it's in a bullish trend, uh, just like gold overall, longer-term bullish trend. Here's your trend, and, uh, you know, that one uh, looks good. Uh, no, I'm sorry, AXU. Okay, I, can, I got that confused with a gold mining stock. This is AXU. Alexco Resource Corp, which is waste management. Uh, there was a sim similar symbol that uh, was like in gold stock, so my, my uh, apologies there. 
ALO. This one's a gold stock. Not the same one I was thinking of, but uh, ALO broke out, back tested, and you know, just looks looks like a constructive bottoming chart. A lot of these gold stocks have already moved up with a big run we've had in gold. Here's one that uh, looks to be bottoming, uh, possibly. It's a penny stock. You have to be careful. Could be, you know, this could be just a dead cap bounce, but a nice looking chart. There's some near term levels if you're looking for a low priced uh, gold uh, stock, maybe a bottoming play. And again. I feel better, uh, much better, and more confident in these once I, I have a little more visibility on on, uh, on gold and if it's going to take the next leg up or not. It's still in that trading range that I've been talking about now for the last four months. FPRX, 5 Prime Therapeutics, another biotech stock. Uh, I'm going to tighten this line up a little bit. should be right about there. And so it looks like a breakout today. 807, volume looks pretty good. You can see decent volume. You know, the day's not over yet, and it's already above average volume. Uh, positive divergence, things I like to see. Again, I've already stamped my disclaimer, or disclosure, I should say, on uh, uh, biotech stocks and how, you know, potentially aggressive and do your own due diligence and all that. But I'm sharing names that I like because, again, you can sit here and try to make uh you know two three percent a week if you're lucky in the stock market lately um if you get it get the trends right or this guy has about 20 percent up there maybe a little less i'm measuring from the breakout point uh, about 20 percent to that 515 target and about uh 50 percent up to that 650 target that's fprx and that is uh today's a fed day I put a little asterisk there too um, but um, you know, as far as uh, you know, the breakout being a little bit questionable, but if it can close up there, you can see it popped right here, but it never had a daily close. It tried to pop that level again, couldn't close it. We have an hour to go, and uh, if this one can build into the close, that will be a breakout, and uh, especially if you see follow through tomorrow. That's one of the better looking ones that I've showed you so far today. ATRA. Uh, Atara Biotherapeutics, uh, another biotech stock, like I said, common theme lately. Uh, this one broke out here, went up, hit what would have been my first target. I just picked this one up today. Um, it consolidated under that level. There was resistance about 1439, but it's since broken out and uh, looks to be headed up here. PPO, everything I see on this chart looks constructive. Uh, 1750 would be the next target. Mm, let's just take it from there. If we get there, that would be a gain of, of about... 12%, a little better than 12% from where we're at now. Uh, AGX, so just a few more here, guys, and we'll wrap this one up. I could go on and on. Uh, there's tons of nice-looking setups. And, again, the common theme here lately, I've talked about, you know, potential pullbacks because of the divergence, everything in the market, but the, uh, the setups that I've been posting and just almost uh, everything I'm coming across are just bullish setups. Um, especially in these, again, you're seeing stocks that are not top components of the S&P or not even included in the S&P 500 here. Uh, this one, I talked about a bullish engulfing candle earlier. There's a textbook bullish engulfing candle. Uh, it's a low, I think a thinly traded stock, uh, I believe, but uh, look at that candle. It just uh, engulfed a bunch of uh, the previous uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least seven candles there. Um, big level up here, about 37.44. Uh, I think there's a good chance it'll hit that. That's about 4%, and that was a key support level. If it can take that out, remember, bullish engulfing candles are bottoming sticks, potential bottoming sticks. I like the PPO, the fact it's turning up here. I like the fact there's positive divergence. If we get a bullish cross soon, well, that'll be confirmed. And so you treat a uh, bullish engulfing candlestick as a bottoming stick. And so therefore, how to trade it? Well, you can take a position now. It's going to be finalized today unless there's a big reversal into the close. And uh, just set a stop appropriate and, and let it run. Let this one run. I would, you know, probably get a reaction there and that might be all you get. But if it can clear 37.50, uh, I think it opens the door up easily to move up here to about 41.37 then that 43.81 uh, level. And again, we'll just have to see what the market does going forward. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, if we have, if the stock market continues to rally into year end and beyond, then uh, you just want to trail stops up and let this one ride. But as of now, let's just say that would be my, my preferred swing target there at 4381 if it gets there. Uh, AGX. Uh, Argan, uh, this is an engineering. Oh, no, that's the one I just covered. Sorry, I was looking down at my sheet. I didn't see. I already typed that one in. PUMP. 
All right, pump another. Uh, this is a you know common theme here. These oil and gas equipment and services. That's remember that's XES is the ETF, and XEX is cracking above the trend line today. Not very impulsive, and it still has resistance about 750. But I mean, just like I said, in, of the energy stocks, this subsector is uh, my favorite. With XOP being a close second, and um, and of course XLE is a big energy sector, so um, you can go with XEX, less risk, more diversity, or these individual names like I've been trickling out lately, and again, Pump is one of them. Uh, it's already broken out, starting to run, but it's just indicative to a lot of the charts I'm seeing lately with these nice divergent lows, uh, breakout, and uh, steady buying so far. This one's cracking above that 949-ish resistance slash target level, and you can see my next uh, next targets right there, about 12 and $14 on that one. That'd be a pretty nice lift uh, if it gets there. Uh, S-E-M-F-F. Uh, I'm not sure what this company does, um, but there's a you know divergent low, low price stock uh, at support. There's also a Canadian shares if you are a Canadian. Uh, some uh, some of to Canadian company so it trades on the TSX and uh, that's the Canadian share same same chart as the one I just showed you the one I showed you SEMFF if you're uh, trading in the US uh, that's an over-the-counter stock or uh, I believe so and RES next one up another energy equipment and services same story bullish falling wedge breakout steady buying so far uh, nice divergences there, and I uh, haven't really marked this one up for targets. This is These are old levels I've had on that chart before. I'd have to study it a little bit further, but uh, assuming the sector breaks out and sticks, that's a nice swing target, I think, right there, about 676. Uh, I think that would be a good chance that that would not only be hit, but we'd get a reaction there, so that would be a good objective place to take profits. That's over a 50% gain if and when it gets there, RES. Uh, like I said, I could go through the... Um, the, all the stocks within that sector and give you guys a hundred different setups it's too much so you'll have to pick your favorites and again I will do if I continue to see you know constructive uh, bullish developments in both crude oil and the energy stocks like I said crude oil needs to run needs to break out or the energy stocks you know will these bullish patterns will kind of fizzle out and finally blue Another biotech stock, uh, nice clean downtrend line there. Actually, let me tighten. Yeah, that's that probably should come in right about there. Yeah, you have more reactions, breakout, back test, boom, and a move up. So that's uh, what you like to see. Uh, sometimes you have breakout and the stock just runs, and sometimes you break out and you back test the level. So you broke out, you back tested the trend line, followed by a big impulsive green candle up. We had a momentum fueled overshoot of this first target, uh, 87.30, but we're right above it, right below it now. So if we can pop 87.30 with conviction, we'll head on up here. You know what? That's where we stopped at that previous reaction high. Yeah, there we go. Well, no, we stopped a little bit below it. So let's just mark that now as the next resistance level. And there was actually, it was right around the top of these candles. So that, that, that would have been a second target there, $92 even. So uh, if this one can power up through 87.30 again, and especially take out 92, uh, that could open the door for move all the way up here to that uh, 114.58 area. And again, uh, pretty constructive chart. Some nice volume on the breakout recently. And uh, let's wrap it up here. I'll continue to... Um, do these updates and as always if you have any question on any of these stocks that are covered in this video you're welcome to post those questions below in the comment section whether you're a silver or gold member gold members if you have any questions about any other stocks not mentioned here i've spent some time catching up on on questions and chart requests in the trading room today but again uh gold members any stock your own position anything i've covered or not covered uh you can just post that in the trading room please and uh you know tag me at sign r s o t c and i will uh get back to you with uh, an opinion on that and if i miss it you know, give me a day or so sometimes, I'm busy doing other things. Just bump me again uh, on it in the trading room and I'll, I'll try to get back to you. All right, we'll wrap it up here. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.